Hi, I'm Vanya from Coitec, and today I'm talking to Marcus, um, application engineer from Thales, and he will be telling us a bit uh, how to use the power saving features of narrowband IoT and CAT-M, how to set up the timers on a cellular LPWA module, and what is the impact that this will have <clears throat> on the energy consumption. Hi, Marcus. Vanya. So in our last video, we talked about um, uh, the LGA dev kit and the OTI and your colleague David explained how to set that up and start recording. Uh, partly we also discussed the theory of EDRX, PSM and the timers that control these modes. Uh, and today I thought we will dig a little bit deeper into these timers. Like how do you calculate them? How do you configure the module to get the lowest possible energy consumption? So uh, Marcus, can you explain which timers one need to work with and what are the commands to control them? The following set of timers uh, can be changed uh, to optimize the energy consumption. We've got the active time on, and the periodic tau cycle. And for EDRX, we've got the paging cycle length, which is the EDRX value, and the paging time window. Um, all of them are defined in the 3GGP technical specification, um, TS27007. And uh, the PSM timers can be controlled via the AT command AT plus CPSMS. And according to the same specification, the EDRX settings um, should be controlled by the command AT plus CEDRXS. <laughs> um, but within that command, um, you do not have the possibility to set the paging time window. Therefore, we at Thales created an own command, uh, which is called AT caret SE DRXS, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, to really reach the lowest energy consumption of our modules, um, we need to enable the so-called suspend mode which is a little bit longer uh, command in our configuration settings, uh, which are in the AT carrot SCFG uh, section. So it's a mobile equipment operation mode, power management, suspend needs to be set to one. But uh, this setting needs to be done only once. So we have three set of commands. One is for EDRX timers, one is for the PSM, and then you, of course, set one to enable suspend mode. Um, so can you show us how to calculate them? Like, how do you set timers uh, for the first one, for the PSM, let's start, and then uh, look into the then EDRX? Um, we use the CPSMS command, as I said, to set the periodic uh, tracking area update and uh, the requested active time. Um, so. For example, let us take a periodic update timer for uh, seven minutes, which is as well 420 seconds. The value needs to be entered in an 8-bit binary format, which is um, where the first three bits represent uh, the base multiplier and the last five bits uh, is the actual value. Um, everything is, ex I explained, defined in 3GGP and could be found in the TS24008. For the seven minutes, we use, for example, a multiplier of one minute, and uh, which is the 101 at the beginning. And of course, a seven uh, will be in binary format uh, 0011. But um, of course, we can use another multiplier as well, the 30 seconds multiplier, which will be the 100 at the beginning and a binary value of 14, which is 0, 0110. Um, the requested active time works accordingly, but has a different uh, base values. So for example, we want to use a 10 seconds active time. We need to set uh, the 0, 0, 0 value at the beginning, which is a multiplier of two seconds. And uh, to come to 10 seconds, we need to have a binary value of five, which we know is a 101. And altogether, we've got a AT command, which is shown here. AT plus CPSMS one to, ex to enable the command, and then the timer values, which we just discussed. It will be really good if you can uh, show us the reference. Like, how does it look like if we are not 
if we haven't done anything, if we haven't sent any of these commands? Sure. The reference is no PSM, no EDRX, and no suspend. Yeah. I activate a recording and start the module with GPO2 in your nice GUI, which is connected to our on button on the dev kit. The module will start to register to the network, and after the RRC connection release, it will be in idle mode. And um, the peaks we will see show the RF listener listening for pagings uh, from the network. So if we can, if we measure the time in between, we see it's the typical EDRX cycle length of 2.5 seconds for narrowband IoT. And if I make a measurement over uh, some sample time like this, we will end up with 15 to 16 milliamps. Okay, next step is to enable the PSM. I switched on the PSM with the AT plus CPSMS command and we clearly see the difference. Um, the active time is down to 10 seconds, which we defined a uh, few seconds before. And afterwards, the module is in PSM and sleeping. According to the mentioned uh, specification, the module is requesting the PSM values with an attach request or within the tracking area update message, which is sent to the network. But if the network really accepts the value, it's up to the network. So the network or the MNO has the last word? Exactly. So different networks will accept different values or even might uh, overwrite uh, the values with their fixed values. And um, this is quite important to understand. And um, let's check what we've got. So I enable uh, to send the registration status um, from the network and I send AT plus CE rec equals five and request the status by AT plus CE rec question mark. The command returns the values which will be used from the network side and have to be used from the module. Um, to make the reading a little bit easier, the representation of the values from the CE rec command output is uh, the other way around uh, from that what we entered in the CPSMS. So, Very logical, yes, indeed. <laughs> so in CPSMS, yeah. uh, we entered periodic tau and active time. In the CE rec, uh, we get active time and periodic tau at the end of the output. Mm -hmm. And if we compare uh, the values, for the active time, we've got uh, the same value which we set uh, 0, 0, 0 and uh, uh, the 101 uh, for our binary 5. But for the periodic tau, um, we have set uh, the 101 and a triple 1 at the end um, as value, but we received the 100 and uh, 0, triple 1, 0. Uh, which indicates a 30 second uh, multiplier and uh, a 14 binary value, which is finally the same seven minutes we, which we set uh, within our one minute uh, base multiplier, but uh, representation is different. So in the network, they use the 30 seconds, uh, even if we request a one minute. Okay, so with these settings, the uh, the module will go to sleep after 10, uh, after 10 seconds and wake up for the periodic tower of seven minutes, regardless of the representations that we got. Yes, we can see the seven minutes here. And our energy consumption is going down to around 13 milliamps. I finally enable the Centurion suspend mode. And the module indicates uh, to be ready to go into suspend with this USC. And now I have to toggle the RTS signal, which I set to GPO1. And now the module will went into the real suspend after the active time, which we can see here now. 10 seconds active time and afterwards our suspend mode 
which is only three microamp in the average. Compared to our reference uh, of 60 milliamps, uh, this is really yeah, it's amazing. a huge jump. Yeah. Going from 16 milliamps down to 13 and now to three, below three microamps. Yeah, pretty good, yes. Cool, so how about the, then the EDRX timers? How will that look like when we start playing with those? Um, the timer value settings are a little bit easier. So there's a defined table, uh, which binary number is representing uh, which timer value. Um, for the different uh, radio access technologies, uh, CAT-M and NVIOT, and we just need to enter uh, these values via the CEDIXS command or via our own AT carrot SEDIXS command, uh, where we can set the paging time window as well. Let me take our EMS31 module in LTE CAT M to show the effect of EDIX. At the beginning, EDIX is disabled to show the normal status where we see the spikes of the receiver part according to the DIX cycle. I enable the CE reg equals 4 registration status. And here we see again our PSM timer and our active time, which is a one hour PSM timer and an active time of five minutes now which means that these spikes we see here will be there the whole active time. So for five minutes we will have this power consumption. In opposite to NBIoT and CATM the default DAX cycle is only 1.25 seconds. So we see some more spikes here. And if we take for example a 20 seconds time frame, we will end up with an average of 3.3 milliamp. Now I will enable EDIX and here we see our EDIX value which we have chosen, which is 20 seconds with a paging time window of five seconds. So the module needs to adapt a little bit to the new setting. This will take uh, a short moment. But then what do we expect? We expect a paging time window of five seconds where we see our spikes and in the whole 20 seconds frame uh, we should not see any spikes anymore. So let's check if the module is adapting correctly. Okay. Oh. Now it adapted to the new settings. And we can see in our 20 seconds time frame, paging cycle length, we have a five second paging time window. And if we compare the current consumption, it dropped to two milliamp only. I like this display because here you can really see the difference between non-DIX and a DIX setup. Okay, as I said, this will be done the whole active time, so in our setting in the moment for five minutes and afterwards the module will go to sleep. Thank you, Marcus. Thanks for walking us through the timers for the power saving modes of the cellular LPWA. That was really, really good, a step by step, hands on. Uh, thank you all for watching. And if you find this content very useful, press like and stay tuned for more.